in every Vedantic text, in any Vedantic text, when the Srishtihi creation is discussed, as a method of arriving at the truth, the matter is brought into discussion first. Very simple. Why matter is brought into discussion? When the creation is discussed, Because matter is the material cause. Therefore, nat naturally, matter has to be brought into discussion. But matter itself cannot contribute for the creation because matter is of the nature of inertness. So, what is that? which contributes for the matter to be, you know, to have matter to have the status of being the material cause is, we say, Chaitanyam, the consciousness or Brahman. So the pure consciousness with matter alone becomes what? Ishwaraha. So in this text we, we were seeing the matter. We saw the original matter, the uncreated original, primordial, most abstract, subtlest matter is known by the term Moola Ajnanam or Moola Avidya or Moola Prakriti. I am using three different words. All the three are synonyms. Moola Ajnanam, Moola Avidya, or Moola Prakritihi. And this original subtlest matter, otherwise known by this, any of these three words, now Moola Avidya, is of three types. One matter alone is of three times, three types. And what are those three types of the original matter? Predominantly sattvic matter called Maya. Even though Maya is predominantly sattvic, Still, Maya also has other two gunas, Rajas and Tamas. Similarly, the predominantly Rajasic matter called Avidya, which is predominantly Rajasic, but it is also has Sattva and Tamas. Then, predominantly Tamasic matter called Prakritihi. I repeat, predominantly sattvic matter called Maya, predominantly rajasic matter called Avidya and predominantly tamasic matter called Prakritihi. Now, 
of these three, the first two, Maya and Avidya, serve as Upadis, manifesting medium for consciousness. Upadhi is a manifesting medium. So this Maya because of the man the this Maya is Samashti Ajnanam, Samashtihi, and Avidya is Vyashtihi. Therefore, this consciousness we saw already manifest in this Maya is enjoys the status of being the Ishwaraha. And consciousness manifests in Avidya has the status of being the Jivaha. Really, the Jiva and Ishwara absolutely one and the same consciousness. The difference, as difference as Jiva and Ishwara, only because of the difference in the manifesting medium, the Upadhi. We also saw then This Maya has twofold powers. What is that power? Avarana Shaktihi, Vikshepa Shaktihi. And Avarana Shaktihi, even though it's called power of wailing, it does not cover Ish Ishvara. The Avarana Shaktihi contributes for the status. Ishvara's status, which state is the status of being the all-knowing and omniscient. And Vikshepa Shaktihi, the power of projecting, contributes for the status of being the almighty, omnipotent. The two powers of Maya, Maya obtaining as the power of wailing and power of projecting contribute for the Ishwara's status of being the omniscient and omnipotent, thereby the status of being the creator. And the Jiva we saw, what is Jiva? Again, Jiva hai ha nothing but awareness associated with the avidya. But the power of wailing, avarna shaktihi and the vikshepa shaktihi, these two powers are there for my avidya also. But power of wailing at the individual, the tot individual level, vesti level, covers the intellect, thereby it contributes for what? the ignorance, now the thought level, ignorance. Listen, Ajnanam. It prevents, there is, no, what is now, there is knowledge, I am, but what I am is prevented, is not known, isn't it? The I am alone is there. I am what? That is not there. Knowledge, I am is there, but what I am is not there. And I am awareness, the full total knowledge is not there, which means that I am is there, but later on what I am, that what is covered, the answer for what is covered. Is it covered means what? It is there, see? The, the, therefore, this Avarna Shakti at the individual level covers it contributes for what now? Self ignorance. And thereby, then Vikshepa Shaktihi, the power of projection, contributes for what? The erroneous perception, Adhyasa, and thereby erroneous notions, Ahankara, and thereby all superimpositions of uh, limitations of the non self upon the self. And then you know, indirectly what contributes for the samsara. Isn't it? The sense of being bound itself is because of the wrong notion 
which is ahankara it's all finally this adya this avarna shakti hi and the part of the jiva contributes for the samsara which means jiva becomes jiva is as though the creator of samsara ishwara is the creator of the jagat this much you already seen in the previous classes then now we entered into the ishwara srishti the, the topic of creation we are we are keeping away jiva for some time now we are entering into the analysis of the creation which is called adhyaropa prakaranam or srishti prakaranam here ishwaraha the one endowed with the the power of create the wielding power uh, called maya which you no know, in terms of avarna shakti hai and vikshepa shakti hai, is is what now is said to be what now keep said to be use you know making use of this tamah pradana prakriti hai. remember now the tamah pradana pra- predominantly tamasic matter is made use of so the entire universe the entire cosmos what we perceive now is what the in fact the cause is the predominantly tamasic matter how this gross universe came into existence you know and how subtle universe came into existence for which before that first originally how the elements came into existence that is what we were seeing last class in that context we saw first so ishwara now you, you leave everything just take only tamah pradhana prakriti hi we are not now bringing into account what we are not bringing into the discussion now sattva pradana maya avid maya avidya everything leave alone now take only prakriti hi the third type of original matter is called prakriti hi not maya not avidya okay the third type of matter we are not talking about the first type of matter maya we are not talking about the second type of matter the avidya we talk about the third type of matter what is that predominantly tamasic matter is called prakriti hi is it clear and this from this prakriti hi the predominantly tamasic matter prakriti hi also even though it is predominantly tamasic it also has what sattva guna and raja rajoguna which means it also is and it is also endowed with sattvic and rajasic aspects you have to remember one thing the original primordial matter is of three constituents sattvic rajasic and tamasic aspects are there so those three are there in all three types of matter but one becomes the predominant in each in sat sattva becomes predominant in maya rajas becomes predominant in avidya then tamas becomes predominant in prakriti hope i am not confusing is it clear so now we are talking about only prakriti hi now you have to remember, forget about all those things mula avidya original primordial matter leave alone <laughs> and three types of that of the three types predominantly sattvic matter maya you leave predominantly rajasic matter avidya you leave 
now you have to think of only one type of matter third type of matter that is predominantly tamasic matter okay and is predominantly tamasic from this alone subtle elements subtle sense powers gross elements gross elementals all of them have come into existence from this predominantly tamasic matter gross gross elements and the gross elementals subtle elements subtle elementals so subtle and the gross okay elements and the elementals the entire elemental universe subtle and gross universe have come into existence from this predominantly tamasic matter called prakriti hi is it clear or not the universe is not universe is not the whole the whole world objective universe the entire objective universe the entire cosmos including every individual body mind sense complex is a product of this predominantly tamasic matter only so how it begins this textbook how it presents the srishti it says this predominantly tamasic matter called prakriti hi also has three amshas three aspects sattva amshah rajomshah sattvamshah rajomshah then tamas amshah tamas amshah is it sattvic rajasic tamasic aspects of the predominantly tamasic matter just now there what you do say only the sattvic aspects of the matter alone you take so from this okay this therefore from this predominantly tamasic matter came into existence five subtle elements subtle original elements subtle elements means ungrossified elements not gross elements subtle elements See, even subtle elements are not perceptible. Subtle earth is not percept. Earth means you need to think of something gross. Subtle earth, subtle water, subtle fire, subtle air, subtle space are not perceptible. And the subtle elements, where have they come from? they are products of this predominantly tamasic matter and how the sequence subtlest of the subtlest of the subtle elements is subtle space <laughs> space came first from the space came air from the air came fire the from the fire came water the water came earth 
is it clear and now each element in this order so each element has three fold aspects of their cause what is the cause of the subtle elements immediate direct cause of the subtle elements is what predominantly tamasic matter called prakriti hi i am repeating so that you won't forget you don't need to go back and do any homework so each element has three aspects satvamsha rajasamsha rajomsha satvamsha rajomsha is it tamas amsha to satvik rajasik tamasik aspects are there in each element now we have five subtle elements with three aspects so these five subtle elements are called sukshma bhutani or tan matrani tan matram sukshma bhutam subtle element are all synonyms tan matra tan matra tan matra means what tan matra tan matrani na mean just subtle element that's all subtle space is a tan matra subtle air is a tan matra subtle fire is a tan matra each subtle element is tan matra so sukshma bhutani when you say this it is called what సూక్ష్మ భూత సృష్టి క్రియేషన్ ఆఫ్ సటిల్ ఎలిమెంట్స్ జస్ట్ వెరీ క్విక్ ఇట్ గోస్ హౌ నాట్ ఇట్ ఇస్ నాట్ డిస్కస్డ్ వై యాక్చువల్లీ అవర్ ఇంట్రెస్ట్ ఇస్ నాట్ ఇన్ నోయింగ్ ద క్రియేషన్ బట్ జస్ట్ వెరీ క్విక్లీ గో వీ హ్యావ్ టు అరైవ్ ద ట్రూత్ ఓకే నౌ ఫ్రమ్ ది సాత్విక్ ఆస్పెక్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఈచ్ ఎలిమెంట్ corresponding sense subtle sense power has come into existence from the creation of subtle elements now move, we are moving on to the creation of subtle elementals what are the subtle elementals first subtle elementals we see the sense powers sense powers five sense powers which are which obtain in the five physical parts called golakani the sense powers are indriyani so seeing power hearing power power of smelling power of taste power of touch all these subtle five sense powers now our products of or have come into existence from where you know the products of this satvik aspect of the five subtle elements so satvik aspect of each element has become what one given subtle sense power so the seeing like that no so we say the the power of hearing is satvik aspect of the you no know, space the power of touch is satvik aspect of air the power of seeing is satvik aspect of fire subtle fire then the power of taste is satvik aspect of water and the power of smelling is the part satvik aspect of the earth so from satvik aspect of each 
element has become a given subtle sense power. Is it clear now? Then all the five subtle sattvic aspects of all the five elements together become the cause of the entire antahkaranam. So, antahkaranam. So, the sense powers are said to be bahya karanani, external means of, no, external sense organs. Mind is said to be the internal, you know, antahkar sense organ. But even though mind is said to be internal, this is not actual, there is no really figurative expression, there is no real, mind is not really internal. Understand, mind pervades everything. But in between the mind and the external, you know, world of objects, the sense powers are in between. Therefore, mind is said to be figuratively as an internal, antahkaranam. Sense power is called Bahya Karanam, external. Really speaking, there is no internal, external. Understand? One thing you have to understand, the six aspects, Antah Karanam is a product of Sattvic aspect, aspects of all the five elements together. And each sense power is the product of Sattvic aspect of a given you know, element. Is it clear now? So now you have understood what the sattvic elemental products, sense powers. Now, not only your sense power, isn't it? Now you can understand all the sense powers obtaining in all the living beings are have come into existence from the sattvic aspects of subtle elements. All the antakaranams are products of what? Sattvic aspects of subtle elements. So last class we came up to this point and we, we analyzed very, he, he defined what is antakaranam. Antakaranam is of, is of two, two names, two types. One is what? Two, two different names are given to Antakaranam as Manaha and Buddhihi. And these two names are actually functional names. Actually speaking, Antakaranam is one alone. It is not two. Then we don't have two minds or two Antakaranam. One Antakaranam gets two names as mind and intellect, Manaha and Buddhihi, in keeping with the functions. If there is a decision, that is mind, the intellect. In this dilemma, doubt, confusion, that is mind. Intellect and mind. And all the emotions come under the cat, you know, come as part of the mind. So, manaha and buddhihi. We saw, of course, I am not going to elaborate, discuss elaborately. Then he also talked about chittam and ahankaraha. And what is chittam? Chittam is memory and has a beautiful definition of chittam here anusandhanam isn't it anusandhatmika anusandna vrittihi so the, the the thought which is a recollection of the past experiences which you know, which are also in the form of thoughts constitute what memory and this memory belongs to mind and ahankaraha, I said the thought, the antakkarna vrittihi, the thought which is, which is because of which self-identity is possible, is called ahankara. The thought without which self-identity is not possible, because of which self-identity is possible, that thought is called ahankaraha. 
for you to say i i am i am a human being i am a conscious being to say that the identity isn't it to have self identity in a given thought this that's particular thought is called ahankara the ahankara actually is has been taken as the buddhi part of the buddhi now even though we, we see the four manaha buddhi chittam ahankara all these are all what products of all these together constitute you can say what come under one one object called mind antakaranam and they are all what products of sattvic aspects of subtle elements is it clear this much we have already seen we have to go to the new lesson today don't forget we are in the we are in the process of this analyzing the creation and we have seen what now only we are now we are seeing the creation of subtle elementals there we have seen the creation of subtle minds and the subtle sense powers now we are going to see the next See the seventieth sentence here. So we saw that abhiman atmika antak karna vritti hi ahankara. The next the, he is concluding now that what is con- conclusion is about what conclusion of the creation of subtle elementals in terms of antak karna and sense powers. Ye te पुनः आकाशादि गत सात्विक अंशेभ्य मिलितेभ्य उत्पद्यन्ते विच मींस उत्पद्यन्ते मींस कम इनटू एक्जिस्टेंस व्हाट कम इनटू एक्जिस्टेंस this memory and ahankara memory and ego so the thought because of which self identity is possible is called ego because of which i sense is possible the knowledge i am is possible is called ahankara now even the ahankara memory ahankara ego memory the chittam manaha buddhi all of them are also what products of sattvic aspects of the sat all the five subtle elements there ends the topic we are going to the new lesson now yet now we're going to understand now the nature of the subtle the now in the next month he is talking about the nature of the antah karanam and the sense powers he is talking ye tesham prakashatmakatvat satvikamsha karyatvam so ye tesham means of these of these means what of these six six means what antakaranam antakaranam in terms of what men intellect mind memory and ego okay antakaranam and its five sense powers all of them prakashatmakatvat they are of the nature of illumining illuminating prakashatmakatva means they are of the nature of illumining 
they are capable of illumining mind is capable of illumining and the sense powers are capable of illumining you know how they are of the how they are capable of illumining is it because they are capable of illumining the mind is mind the antakaranam enjoys the status of being the illuminator also sense power also what now enjoys status of being the illuminators they enjoy the they have the capacity to enjoy the status of being the illuminators the seeing power is capable of illumining what illumining the light form color hearing is capable of illumining the sound so each sense power is capable of illumining its corresponding sense object and similarly that's because the mind the entire internal the antakaranam the mind as a whole back is capable of backing the sense powers now the mind also is what now is capable of illumining the because because mind and sense powers are of the capacity to illumine they are called what now they are said to be the products of sattvic no sattvic aspects of subtle elements you ask the question why do you call mind and sense powers the products of sattvic aspects of subtle elements because they are capable of illumining understand we're going to this capable of illumining underline and keep it we'll analyze again discuss later on why how are they capable of illumining there's a different thing isn't it but still they're capable of illumining capable of illumining because they're capable of manifesting so understand that therefore they are of the nature of illumining knowing they illumining better okay they are called what now they are said to be the products of the sattvic aspects of subtle elements understand okay now we'll go to the next line so we here we talk about the five layers of personality pancha koshaha na so there these now these five we have learned now what the, the six we have learned what is it antakaranam consisting of four types of no thoughts known by four different names as manaha buddhi mind intellect memory and ego manaha buddhi chitta ahankara this antakaranam and the five sense powers subtle sense powers all the six the antakaranam plus gnanendriyani all the six which are products of the sattvic aspects of subtle elements constitute what now vijnana mayaha koshaha now we are learning differently okay finally we are going to understand everything what is vijnanamaya kosha yes not learn the technical term vijnan one layer of human no the, the, the five layers of personality the, the one layer of personality is called what now vijnanamaya kosha you need to know all the five different layers of personality later on to distinguish the person from the personality isn't it the person 
the meaning of the word person has to be distinguished from the layers of personality. Understand? So now we are learning one layer of personality called Vijnana Mayaha Koshaha. Vijnana Mayaha Koshaha means what here? What is that? These six Antah Karanam plus five subtle sense powers constitute what? Vijnana Mayaha Koshaha. Now you can say simply differently also. Vijnana Mayaha Koshaha is a product of sattvic aspect of aspects of subtle elements. You can say that. Is it clear? No. The six are no, otherwise called Vijnana Mayaha Koshaha. Different name you are learning. Okay. Yam Buddhihi Jnana Indriyaihi Sahita Vijnana Maya Kosho Bhavati Okay. See here, we have understand. Should I take the entire Antah Karanam or only the Buddhihi? We say, yes. Only the buddhi aspect of antahkaranam. The intellect aspect of antahkaranam alone take it. Okay? The buddhi intellect plus five subtle sense powers, six of them, constitute what? Vijnanamayaha koshaha. And there, take in, from the antahkaranam, take the mind aspect. Intellect plus sense powers form the Vijnanamaya Koshaha, one layer of personality. Mind plus sense powers form the Manomaya Koshaha. Manomaya Koshaha, it is not given that I am telling you. Okay? Manomaya Koshaha, Vijnanamaya Koshaha, two layers of personality. Isn't it? What is Manomaya Koshaha? Mind plus sense powers. What is Vijnana Maya Koshaha? Intellect plus sense powers. So, sense powers are included in where? Vijnana Maya Koshaha as well as in Mano Maya Koshaha. Now, whether you call it Mano Maya Koshaha, Vijnana Maya Koshaha, these two layers of personality are nothing but products of sattvic aspects of subtle elements. Different ways of Doing it, okay. Now I am Kartrutva Bhoktrutva Sukhitva Dukhitvadi Abhimanatvat Sir Abhimanatvena Abhimanatvena. Iha loka, para loka gami, vyavaharikaha, jivaha ityuchyate. Okay. Now he is talking about Now, what is their eye sense is possible because of because of one particular given vritti, isn't it? Given antakkarna vritti. So, the th a given thought because of the given thought modification, not the mere thought, a given thought modification because of which self identity is possible, I sense is possible is called ahankaraha ego we saw that isn't it once that ego is there i that i without the i sense is it possible for one to have the notion that i am the doer the notion i am 
first the not notion the first of all there must be i sense the knowledge i am isn't it without the knowledge i am without the i sense is it possible for one to have the notion about the self there must be self identity only then one can have the notion about this self isn't it what are the notions now i am the doer so enjoying the status of being the doer is called what kartrutvam doership the enjoying the status of being the enjoyer is called what bhoktrutvam enjoyership i am the doer i am the enjoyer then so kartrutvam bhoktrutvam bhoktrutvam then sukhitvam sukhitvam means what enjoying the status of being oneself being happy i am happy i am the doer i am the enjoyer i am happy dukhitvam enjoying the status of being the you no know, unhappy unhappy person dukhitva dukhitvadi abhimanatvena abhimanatva means what such identity enjoying the status of being the one who has identity okay enjoying the status of being the one who has identity which identity no such as what i am the doer i am the enjoyer i am happy i am unhappy all this you know all these entertaining entertainment of all these notions all these notions they're all notions look at this i am the doer is what notion i am the enjoyer is what notion i am happy is what a notion i am unhappy is what notion notion about whom about oneself not about other person here particular okay this notion about oneself this notion about entertainment of the having the, the entertainment of the notion about oneself is called what abhimanatvam identity okay this self identity or notion about oneself as i am the doer i am the enjoyer i am happy i am unhappy etc this notions or our identity once once identity as such is possible because of what because of first of all the given th- thought modification because of the very i sense isn't it true very subtle lesson hope you understand it we have to become very clear here it's a lesson want to go ahead first if there is no such thing called i am that i sense the knowledge i am is called i sense without the i sense how can there be identity self identity such as do or enjoy happy and happy etc isn't it therefore therefore now he says the i sense ahankara dajayam because of which so because of which self identity and the notions are possible okay okay with those notions so the one who is now we are talking about now the one who is endowed with this i sense look at this the one who is endowed with ahankaraha i sense thereby one who has the 
one who enjoys the status of being the doer enjoyer being the happy unhappy no and entertain the notions with self identity and thereby one who travels travels where who travels here one who travels paraloka ihaloka the travels to paraloka he goes up to higher lokas by doing karma enjoy you know accumulating punyam and goes to higher lokas and so again when the punyam gets exhausted comes back to this again this world again is born again in this world ihaloka comes back now again lives here in this world accumulates punyam goes to higher lokas exhausts punyam comes back like here you live in your place earn money save money go for a holiday spend when the money is over come back to your own place again uh, is it like that like that one who shuttles here and there or slogs here and there is called what jeevaha ityuchyate see without even going to the body he is talking about so much now who is a jeevaha understand now don't talk about a swarupam when you say jeevaha what does it mean not pure consciousness is not jeeva consciousness associated with what avidya is jeeva isn't it so this now he says this jeeva ha iti uchyate is said to be an individual who is a jeeva ha the jeeva ha here is none other than one who is shuttling between this world and higher worlds where else can he go understand when does when is he here in this world when no punyam <laughs> has some punyam he has lim, no, limited punyam he is around here and accumulating busy accumulating punyam sometimes pop also because we talk only about ihaloka paraloka gami we say we take it as a good individual okay so accumulating busy accumulating punyam like busy earning money and what does he do once punyam is accumulated what do you do once you have in earned lot of money break from work holiday and he also what now go with the punyam he goes to higher loka he da use the word he okay just say jeeva goes to higher loka again punyam gets exhausted comes back to this world so iha loka paraloka gami one who keeps shuttling here and there this person is called jeevaha who is the one who can shuttle between this loka and that loka one who has self identity self identity he alone can go isn't it and who is don't have self identity what self identity which means one who entertains entertaining the notions about the self is what having self identity what notions i am the doer is a self identity i am the enjoyer not only that i am happy i am unhappy all these you know notions so the in, in, in so having self identity entertaining these notions about the self isn't it thereby one who keeps shuttling up and down higher lokas and this lokas is said to be jeevaha jeevaha iti kaha uchyate who is said to be the jeevaha beautiful definition understand whether you go to higher see he talks about a very highly evolved jeeva we are not even we don't even go to next next street so but he is talking about the jeeva who is for for one to uh, very busy involved in lots of punya karma accumulating punyam and going to heaven and higher lokas 
and enjoying the heavenly pleasures and heavenly food and uh, everything coming back and it which means some 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 good jiva is in not miserable jivas miserable only but relatively relatively <laughs> less miserable jiva <laughs> any jiva is miserable only according to shastra <laughs> Jnana is only non-miserable, okay, free from misery, is a wise person. So he here, iti uchyate. Now, all these things he connected to Vijnanamaya Kosha, he finished. Now you can easily say, who is a jivaha? Look at this, every respect, but he is going to say, a ji, the one the self-identity with the Vijnanamaya Koshaha. If the identity is with the Vijnanamaya Koshaha, then you are a Jeeva. When the identity with the Vijnanamaya Kosha is there, in what form is there identity with the Vijnanamaya Kosha? See, you have identity everywhere. Okay, all over. If whenever there is, there are notions such as I am the doer, I am the enjoyer, you know, I am happy, I am unhappy, these notions, no? when you entertain, your identity is with the Vijnanamaya Kosha. Vijnanamaya. Your identity is with the intellect. Your identity is with the intellect and the sense powers also. Is it clear? Is it clear? Then we, we called what? No. You are a jivaha. What is Vijnanamaya Koshaha? Intellect plus five sense powers constitute Vijnanamaya Koshaha. If the self identity is Vijnanamaya Koshaha, what thought, notions you have? I am the doer, I am the enjoyer, I am happy, etc. Okay, now we'll go to the next one. What is Mano Maya Kosha? He's going to say, talk about it. Because now you know what? Mano, Mano Maya Kosha ha, is also nothing but, say, from the Antakkaram it, itself, we take the mind aspect, isn't it? Intellect aspect goes with Mano, Vijnana Maya Kosha. Now, mind aspect with the same sense powers form what now? Manomaya Koshaha. Very simple. Manastu Jnanendriyaihi Sahitam San Manomaya Kosho Bhavati So mind aspect of the Antakkaranam mind with five sense powers six of them constitute Manomaya Koshaha. Okay. So now he has said what now? Manomaya Koshaha, one layer of personality. Vijnanamaya Koshaha, another layer of personality. Or the five layers of personality, two layers of personality are called what? You know, the Pancha Koshas are the two Koshas. You know, are what now? Products of sattvic aspects of subtle elements. Got it? Now you have to remember, ego is also material product. You are not holding on to ego. You just understand what ego is. That's enough. Your understanding, it's all understanding what it is. Okay. Now, so the products of the creation of the sattvic, the elements, you know, from the sattvic aspects of subtle elements is over. Now, we end, then next enter into the creation of rajasic elementals. You mean what now? Now, from the Raja, Raj, Rajom Shaha, no? Rajom Shaha. The Rajasic aspect of the five subtle elements. Now, what is now next? 
we have karma indriyani five subtle powers of organs of actions you have to remember very carefully here we are not including the physical parts at all subtle imperceptible powers alone we are seeing so the powers you know obtaining in hands powers obtaining the power obtaining in legs the power obtaining in the organ of speech and power obtaining in the excretory organ and organ of procreation the five powers of organs of actions all of them are subtle <laughs> we are nothing physical nothing gross here we are talking about the power, five powers which are called karma indriyani those five powers and we are going to see here now they are all products of rajasic aspects of the subtle elements sattva is over isn't it now rajas we are seeing let us read now karmendriyani first he enumerates karmendriyani so all kindergarten lesson only you can sleep half the way half the time and you can listen also don't worry don't sleep but still you can be very cool ah something is not very difficult i already know these things this called no this called what now reinforcing so even in sleep 12 o'clock 1 o'clock somebody wakes you up you can say and sleep which means what you will never forget what karmendriyani are i think every one of you should start teaching discussing you know sharing this class with other person so that you, you you become thorough for you karma indriya karmendriyani vak pani pada payu pasthakhyani he says the karma indriyani karma indriyani indriyam is a subtle power indriyani subtle powers subtle powers obtaining in organs of actions isn't it in hands legs organ of speech repro- reproductory then um excretory organs what are they walk walk power of organ of speech pani pada pani pada the pani the power obtaining in hands pada the power obtaining in legs payu then power upayu and upastham the powers obtaining in reproductory and excretory organs so five powers okay now etani etani punaha punaha akashadinam rajom shebhya vyastebhya prithak prithak kramena utpadyante so etani means these five subtle powers obtaining in organs of actions you know they are also they also come into existence they are born of you know separately prithak prithak independently individually from where rajom shebhya the rajasic aspects of these five subtle elements respectively kramena means respectively what does it mean from space rajasic aspect of space one given power of or the power of karmendriyam has come into existence like from rajasic aspect of air one given power rajasic aspect of fire one given power like that from each rajasic aspect of each subtle element 
each power of organ of action has come into existence. Understand now? Which means each power of organ of action is connected to a rajasic aspect of one given element. Now you can say, look at the order is given here. Walk. Walk means what now? The power of organ of speech is a product of rajasic aspect of space. Then, our power obtaining in hands, subtle power obtaining in hands, is what product of rajasic aspect of the air. Then, the power obtaining in legs is a product of rajasic aspect of fire. Then we say, the evacuation, the power of the organ of evacuation is the, the, you know, is the product of rajasic aspect of water. Then, the power of organ of procreation is the product of rajasic aspect of earth. Earth. Is it clear now? So, like this, each subtle power of organ of action is a product of corresponding rajasic aspect of subtle elements. Now we'll go to the next line. Vayavaha Prana Apana Vyana Udana Samanaha Okay. Now, Vayavaha. Vayavaha means what now? Five. See, Vayuhu is a singular. Vayavaha, plural. But we don't say airs. Vayu literally means air. We don't have five airs. One vital air is called Pranaha. Isn't it? That one vital air called Pranaha has what now? Has five different names. In keeping with five different functions governed by that one air. So called five physiological functions. So pancha pranaha. What about these pranas? My God, pranas alone leave when the pranas leave that is what first that is how we discover death the person being dead is determined by what whether prana is there or not there is no way of determining the person being dead isn't it prana is not there he is dead even though mind departs first. Anyway, so what I want, these, these five, the prana means, these five physiological functions, subtle, understand? The subtle aspects, but these five physiological functions, governed by one prana, enjoying five different names, as prana, apana, vyana, samana, udana, actually is also product of rajasic aspects of all the five elements, subtle elements. Ten, isn't it? So, five physiological we say here. This vayu, one vital air, this vital air, 
which involved in five different functions governing five different physiological systems in the body is also what product of rajasic aspect of subtle elements all the rajasic all the five rajasic aspects of all the five subtle elements one prana is a product of rajasic aspects of all the five subtle elements that is why it is capable of governing five different functions one air <laughs> governs five different functions because it is a product of rajasic aspects of all the five elements there we saw mind antakaranam is the product of sattvic aspects of all the five elements whereas here the vital air is a product of rajasic aspects of the five elements all the five elements is it clear yeah now we can understand he is going to define beautifully each prana but before i am not going to do that today i can do that today but still and we'll see now now we can say this five power subtle powers of organs of actions pancha karma indriyani and the five pranas five physiological functions no so the prana we are going to see why each we are going to see now together constitute what pranamaya koshaha pranamaya koshaha one layer of personality what is pranamaya koshaha another layer of personality and then which because why i have to talk about in see there is identity with each layer of personality the person is identified with each layer of personality at different levels it is like what you identify yourself with the blue shirt green pant it is a layer isn't it layer which is covering it's like that so what is pranamaya koshaha pranamaya so pranamaya koshaha is another given layer of personality which is nothing but what the five physiological the the vital air governing five different physiological functions and the five powers of organs of actions together constitute what pranamaya koshaha now you can understand these three layers of personality vijnanamaya koshaha manomaya koshaha pranamaya koshaha three layers of personality constitute subtle body sukshma shariram now you can understand the entire sukshma shariram is nothing but products of sattvic rajasic aspects of subtle elements so subtle elemental product is our subtle body our subtle body is also elemental product therefore material product therefore matter as we each 
we see what now this whole subtle body is divided into three layers of personality and you understand as what as three different layers of personality subtle layers of personality understand and here i want to tell you now two more layers of personality are there what are they anandamaya koshaha what is anandamaya koshaha i don't need to talk about it now i don't want to wait okay i want to finish this anandamaya koshaha is nothing but avidya understand which is called karana shariram avidya which is said to be the causal body is what now anandamaya koshaha is it clear or not very careful avidya what is avidya rajav pradana prakriti hi avidya predominantly rajasic matter avidya that avidya is the anandamaya koshaha an other layer of personality which is also called causal body what about these three layers of personality which constitute subtle body the three layers of personality subtle body is a product of sattvic rajasic aspects of subtle elements which are products of predominantly tamasic matter got it hope doesn't go above the head i'm definitely i'm not confusing you <laughs> imagine somebody comes and teaches here every word only in english without using one word of sanskritam imagine how would it have been what do you think it's been very nice but i do not know where they can anybody can do it maybe when you try okay now we'll go to the one more only one more layer of personality is there what is that annamaya koshaha gross body is annamaya koshaha okay so anandamaya koshaha is avidya which is rajapradana prakriti hi and subtle body is what now three layers of personality which constitute no constitute the subtle body is, is a product of or the products of sattvic rajasic aspects of subtle elements which are products of predominantly tamasic matter called prakriti okay now the gross body you know it is a annamaya koshaha outermost layer of personality gross layer of personality but what is what is it now isn't it but where how is it how how what is it made of to understand the gross body we need to know the gross elements first isn't it so we're not talking about it now we have to how we have to see the creation of gross elements then from the creation of gross elements we get the gross body therefore we have to wait for the last layer of personality is it clear now we have to see he is going to explain now each prana is going to be why we give five 
different names to one vital air how each you going to say which even the location also this he is a sthanam the place of each prana why prana is called prana why apana is called apana are there five different pranas no only one vital air but what are those five different functions how they get the why do you call prana apana this a definition is going to be given it's nice isn't it but this this is not found in tattva bodha this explanation is not given in tattva bodha see lot of things are discussed in tattva bodha already but the what is what is not given here also is given here okay we have covered slowly what we have covered karna shariram anandamaya kosha we have covered subtle body three layers of personality vijnanamaya manomaya pranamaya isn't it only one one layer of personality so it will take time don't worry it will come later on your time okay prano nama pragamanavan okay si pranaha nama pragamanavan si generally the word pranaha means the function of respiration involving exhalation and inhalation is a oxygen is called prana vayu is it life prana vayu means in sanskrit oxygen but generally the word prana means what life prana means life in samskritam it also the husband is called prana natha he is life of a woman the lord they, they, they say now you, you are the most beloved of this they say that anyway that's something that's not important here now what i want to say <laughs> i just want to because i just thought some indians may, may like to listen all those words okay <laughs> so here pranaha literally that means but here pranaha nama pragamanavan pragamanam means going upwards outwards pragamanam so the vayu which goes upwards outwards is called what prana ha and then this prana where do you where do you feel this prana going out on the tip of the nose when do you, when you can when you can really recognize it if you have flu or some feverish if you have feel you can feel hot air touching you you can really feel the heat. every time you exhale you can feel the hot air touching isn't it hot when you warm you can feel that which means what the tip of the nose is the place where you feel the you know the air flowing upwards outwards the first called what prana ha how is he says pragamanavan prana ha and where is it felt what is its place don't say tip of the nose is the place of prana tip of the nose is not the place of prana sthanam for prana that is where it is felt isn't it so he says nasagravarti see nasagra sthanavarti 
nasa means nose agram means tip you know sthana means place varti means that which is so that which is felt at the tip of the nose is the prana no is the the vital air which goes upwards outwards that is called prana ha okay next it governs what it governs the function of respiration okay now we'll say apano nama vag sorry apano nama avag gamanavan paivadi sthana varti apanah nama you can say ado gamanavan or avag gamanavan the va- the vital air which goes downwards all over gas yeah it's so what is the natural thing isn't it anything which goes downward the air which goes downwards was apana means avag gamanavan or adho gamanavan prag gamanavan prana adho gamanavan apana avag gamanavan downwards and then what is the place where do you feel that prana the place where it is felt is payu adi sthanani poi payu adi payu who means what payu who is organ of evacuation excretion so the excretory where it is felt in means in, in excretory organs such as you know excretory organs organ of ex- ex- evacuation etc there it is felt so ado gamanavan apanah is it clear therefore it governs the function of excretory system is it clear now two systems are over vyano nama vishvagamanavan akhil sharira varti okay the loc- locus locus where you feel this air is given is a particular vyanah vyanah nama vishvagamanavan that which the air which moves all over the body not doesn't go outwards i uh, know uh, upwards or downwards it keeps moving all over the body vishvagamanavan vishvak means that which keeps all over the system is called vishvagamanavan which means by 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 keep by keep on moving all over the body it contributes for the circulation of blood from the heart isn't it even though all the blood vessels are well connected even though cholesterol and things are you know blocking the thing this is vyana only pushes the blood all over so that helps the heart pump understand the heart is pumping and then somehow the blood keeps flowing all over the body circulation is what now the function of circulation the circulatory system is governed by vyanah which means 
the circulation, the blood has to move all over. Means whose fun, whose effort is this? Vyana. That's why Vishwagamanavan. So where is Vyana now? Tell me. All over Vyana is. That is why every small, tiniest nerve ulcer now blood keeps flowing, isn't it? The tiniest, tiniest, thinnest, thinnest hairline like uh, vessel also there is the blood flowing. That is because of Vyana. Okay. Therefore, Akhila Sharira Varti Vishwagamanavan now which keeps going all over the what now akila sharira varti it is obtains in the entire body vyana nice to know all the pranas na next udano nama kanthasthaniya urdhvagamanavan Kramana Vayuhu Okay. This Vudanaha Nama Kantasthaniyaha The vital air governing the given function of retention the function of retention, retentive system is governed by the same vital air. Therefore, it is known as what? Udanaha. And where does, what is, where is it felt here? Kantasthaniyaha. Where does it obtain? In the system. Na? Kantasthaniyaha. Kantaha means neck. In fact, neck means what? Throat. Kantaha literally means neck. Not outside, isn't it? Neck means outside. This is throat. So this udanaha is said to be obtaining in the neck, but it means what? It is the it is involved the function of retention. The retentive system is governed by udana. And then urdhva gamanavan. Urdhva gamanavan udanaha. See, it, it is it, it, that which goes outside, that which goes upwards, which goes upwards, is it? Like, out, out, outward, outside also. It's called Urdhva Gamanavan. In fact, this Vayu, Urdh, no? Utkramana Vayu. This Vayu is called Utkramana Vayu also. Udana is also called Utkramana Vayu. Know why? It is the... When somebody dies, the departure of death, departure of the prana can be determined only by this departure of this Udana. It goes outside. And okay, okay? But it goes, it's called Utkramana. But now, that which leaves the system and goes out. As long as Udana stays here, it retains the prana. When the Udana goes out, nothing is retained. <laughs> the death is, in fact, for the death, that which contributes for the departure of the life in the body is what? The Udana. That's why it's called, the departure of Prana is called Utkrantihi, going out. The departure of Prana is called Utkrantihi and Utkrant, no? that's why this Vayu is called, Udana is also known as what? Utkramana Vayuhu Utkramanam or Utkrantihi means departure of prana 
and ut this this udana is called utkramana vayuhu because what happen when does it only when the prarabdha ends life comes to an end means what then that is when udana will be active otherwise simply it will be there suppose any of other pranas okay wherever any problem comes any pr- every prana every function will be going on properly any one function disturbance is there whenever any function is disturbed because of the given function of the prana then udana will go for help na udana will be available for support but when udana decides to leave not udana doesn't decide i'm saying when udana departs of udana is what departure of the entire sukshma prana and depart of the entire prana implies what already mind has left okay mind leaves along with the mind subtle powers leave and then udana leaves udana leaves means what entire prana leaves which means entire sukshma leaves sukshma leaves means then we say he has passed away passed away who has passed away 80 kilos is still here who has passed away sukshma has passed away which means he has only passed away he is not he is still uh, elsewhere and non contactable address <laughs> he is there non contactable address he is there listen absconding means that's exact meaning <laughs> absconded no where you can contact or get in touch with but you can make sure he is <laughs> definitely is okay now we say udanaha so the departure of the jeeva the sukshma shariram isn't it from this gross body is because of this as a as a function of the udana only see the jiva the prana can go outside of the body through any any of the opening but mostly generally prana leaves through the mouth only the throat only that is why we say udana is said to be what now it's said to be the, the throat is said to be the place of udana sthanam just approximate don't think particular sitting there how you feel it now udana goes means all this is there but now we don't feel why we don't want that to go <laughs> isn't it that may only will know anyway samano nama sharira madhyagata ashita pita annadi samikarana karaha see samikaranam means equally distributing equal distribution is called samikaranam samikarana karaha means the maker of performer of equal distribution <laughs> equal distributor understand one one who is involved in the function of equal distribution one who governs the job of equal distribution what is equally distributed here x na huh? food eaten water drunk juices drunk isn't it all that is all the garbage put in <laughs> i don't want to say that all the food which has been pushed in 
is what anna ashita pita annadi eaten drunk food etc etc means what we don't eat anything else okay only food we eat therefore adi that what has been put in where it sharira madhyagata no eaten drunk food etc where has it gone which goes to the middle of the trunk isn't it sharira madhya means what middle portion of the body which is the tummy isn't it or sir sharira madhyagata so the digestive system obtaining in the middle of the body and where with the the food eaten food drunk sorry the food the, the eaten drunk food etc which don't the food which has been consumed and which is in the digestive system in our own food bag in the, in the middle of the body there and the, the the eaten food is digested cooked to where now cooked to food eaten again gets cooked <laughs> is it which means what then which means all the food becomes cooked and cooked and cooked and converted into glucose you know all carbohydrates starch all rice went in and separation fat cholesterol and that fat saturated unsaturated protein and which protein all those you no know, separation we eat everything lumps but there is somebody has to do the job of separating what people do outside in the pasteurized milk remove the fat mix the fat and spoil the milk then sell it and all dairy cost problems people talk about all those things but here our system inside does the big job of segregating mixing up and then equally distributing all these is it in nutrients to the body all over the samikaranam so equally distributing all the nutrients from the food consumed equal distribution of nutrients whatever nutrients we have we eat magnesium free and we don't have the deficiency means what whatever we put in that job it does maximum it does no all separating and then equally distributing everything and converting them into what blood etc isn't it that is that function is happening in the middle of the body sharira madhya gata ashita pita annadi samikarana karaha therefore known as what because involved in the function of equal disti- equally distributing the food and eaten consumed is called samanaha so the samanaha is a name given to the same vital air for governing the digestive system the function of digestion in fact which contributes for the digestion of the food if samana is a problem in digestion problems we have isn't it we all the time we trouble a lot of work for samana we are eating lots of unwanted food or spoiled food any food the samana really must be cursing us <laughs> why lot of work for this job okay samikaranam tu paripaka karanam si beautiful here he goes he gives one more line he says what is samikaranam what is equal distribution of the nutrients of the food and what drinks consumed means what that is explained in the following sentence which we'll see 
next class. Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Hari Om